back to Spotlight. We first met her work when she was a finalist in the 2012 Super Plus Under 40 Artist of the Year competition. More recently, Barrett McCauley has staged a solo photo-based mixed media art exhibition and installation entitled Cocooning Catharsis, held at the Hypo Gallery from December 19 to January 13. We met up with her. Check this out. The title Cocooning Catharsis is really about being in a state of becoming, um, a state of change, uh, which is why I use the word cocooning as an active verb, cocooning, coming into the cocoon, the place where you incubate, process, and go through all of the turmoil of change and come out on the other side, hopefully, it's a butterfly. Um, it came from just observing my life, the life of my friends and my loved ones, and just life in general, because this is something that's evident throughout life, through all cycles of change. Uh, starting with the beginning of time, really. And um, also it came from a quote by an artist, Kandinsky, who said that all, all things come by the same means um, in the cosmos, by a series of catastrophes, which was something that really intrigued me, that as a way of looking at change, because we always resist change, there's always a part of the process of change where we resist it and we fight all the way down or all the way through until we're on the other side. And when I look at all beautiful things coming out of catastrophe and looking at catastrophe as, or crisis, as an opportunity to grow and to shift into something more beautiful or more whole or more true, um, then it becomes something that I can embrace more. And so I was interested in dialoguing about that visually in my work. The last time I did a show in Jamaica, I was, um, I was going through a lot of personal shifts in my life um, in terms of my relationships and trying to figure out where, uh, where I was going to take my life next and that's where a lot of the work came from. The work, actually the making of the work was, was a meditation through my own personal changes and also dictated the choices that I made for the actual artistic processes that I used to make the work because the processes themselves as itself has a lot to do with accepting imperfection and accepting failure and getting up and trying again and so I would say that I was at the genesis of the chapter that I'm in now which is since then I have uprooted my life my 15 year life in the United States to live in a suitcase for a little while before journeying back to my birthland, which is Sierra Leone, West Africa, which I will be in in a couple of months. So the impetus for this very dramatic move and decision in my life began when I was making this work. And I didn't know that this was what I was gonna do. I had no plan to go to Sierra Leone at all. That plan just happened a few months ago, actually. But it's interesting to look back at the work and see that cycle. I actually foreshadowed major decisions in my life when I was making that work long before I was conscious <laughs> of this. It's kind of wild, so yeah. As a photographer, I love light. As a, a woman, as a spirit, I love light. Um, there's light inside of her as well, inside of Nemesine. Can't see it now in the daylight. <laughs> This, this speaks to cocooning catharsis as well, in that, you know, embracing, not being afraid of darkness, because without darkness we would not be able to discern light. You know, we need that in order to have the light. And so I'm sort of speaking on that on a spiritual plane with the work, but also, I, you know, just from a technique standpoint or from an artistic standpoint, I thought it would be interesting to illuminate the work from within um, and see how that would speak or what that what feeling that might convey or pull out of the beholder standing before it. There are lots of light, kinds of light boxes in the photo world but I thought if I illuminated photo transfer processes what would that do because I'm shining a light on, on imperfection because the processes render imperfect uh, finishes and what would it do to really, really focus on that and, and to speak on that and say imperfection is beauty as well. So these are all things that played into the choices of having light within the pieces.
speaking of our light within. You know, some, some walk upright while some stay wet. That piece uh, is the culmination of everything, the full walk of the show, because you're, you're starting with, with water and with trees and with smoke, something's burnt and left us, and then you're walking into rebirth through this room and memory with Mamasini and the cocoon. And then you're walking into all of these various uh, declarations of spirit until you get to that piece, which is the end of cocooning catharsis, uh, where everything is mixed and indiscernible. But there is a window of light at the corner of that piece through which you exit into new. And so that's what that piece is about. You know, are you ready to exit into what you will be? the Cocooning Catharsis poem that uh, Steve, Steve Wilson and I um, collaborate on poetry together and we'd, we'd, we've done so for a couple of shows or artworks that I've done um, and so I asked him well you know I'm doing this show now we've got to do another poem for this. <laughs> um, he actually was the person who helped me title all of the Lightbox pieces before which all of the titles of the work make up a poem. So that's why there's such long sentences <laughs> for each. And so we wrote this poem and I, I've, I'm drifting towards trying to do this with every show wherever I have the opportunity is to put poetry up on the wall as its own art piece so that there's some kind of textual journey in the work as well that we sort of spread across the wall to have the door split so that you can walk through metamorphosis. For starters, it's home and you want to exhibit your work at home. Um, it was a wonderful opportunity afforded to me by uh, Susan Fredericks, who owns Heiko Gallery, um, and Jimmy Joseph and Brand New Machine Global that, you know, sponsored the show. Um, and I thought it would be really great to widen the conversation of photography in Jamaica because this is a very very challenged art form here still. I, I would say in the Caribbean, but definitely in Jamaica that I experienced the first time I exhibited photography here, or the, well, I guess the last few years that I've done at National Gallery as well, is that, you know, we're a painter and sculptor society, and photography is seen as a little lesser than the, the lazy painter uh, art form. And so the vocabulary for anything outside of the picture of the banana tree in a, on paper in a frame, or the boat on the side of the sea, you know, at the seashore is, is it's not even thought of or not, not considered and I, I want to widen that vocabulary here because there's so there's a ridiculous amount of talent here and I just want to get people thinking about how else to express themselves with photos, what else you can print your work on or, or uh, that it's not just digital photography, people still shoot film, people still make their own cameras and create you know, ethereal images. It's not about creating just perfection or representational imagery. It's, we can do everything, it's just your imagination. I'd, I'd like to see that vocabulary active in the art world here for photography. So that's a big part of it.